Sit down. Stand up. Sit down. Stand up. Stand up.
this is the description of cells. Okay. Now we've got this other line called apathy and 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 Ted right there. Ted's saying that apathy will be gone once you start <coughs> watching execution and you'll be forced to face the reality. Right? That's that's also going under reasoning of why you think it creates this force. So a proper analysis of this argument would probably be along the lines of how televising forces people to watch it, or at least at the least brings the execution to the public eye. It provides access to the people. It, it, it reduces access as because of the um, because of the televisation, and this opens up dialogue between people. And then now you then you also have to tell me where this is. Because you've told me that the exact process of how it's going to create this discourse, but then you also have to tell me, for instance, where this discourse is taking place. Where will this discourse be taking place? Twitter, Facebook, where else? Live shows. Live shows. What do we call the execution channel? Um, Anything else? You see MNBC, yeah. so on and so forth, right? So, we start off with the assertion and we started going deeper as we asked more questions. The first line we had was by opening up the, the platform for dialogue, and then we asked how this opens dialogue. Then we asked, and then the answer was to provide providing access. And then we asked, how does it provide access? Or why does it provide access? And then we answered, because of the lack of that, because of the existence of apathy, this television, is, this televisation is going to make sure that people get to watch it and they're forced to get rid of their apathy and, and witness the exit. Or, or at least not make it to the public eye as of now. And then we said, well, how does this create this force once again? Like, where does it create this force? And then we answered Twitter, Facebook, live shows, CNN, so on and so forth. Um, so we can see that when we're trying to analyze an assertion, we go back to the basics. We ask a few very key questions. How is it going to happen? Why is it going to happen? Where is it going to happen? Does that make sense? Do we have questions? At this point? No? Okay, let's, let's get into evidence then. Uh, what is evidence? Discussion on how Vietnam War worked and 
now the televising of the war being a discourse and kind of stuff the Vietnam War. Now, an analogy can be a good analogy, or it can be a bad analogy, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So you just have to make sure that you're careful about what evidence you bring in, because evidence can be used either way. So, for instance, um, let's, let's have another example. Yeah, so for instance, um, it was shown that women's right, in, women had the first right to vote in, in New Zealand in 1918, if I'm correct. That was also the year the First World War ended. Therefore, giving women the right to vote ends wars. I mean, sure, those are data and statistics and hard evidence that you cannot refuse. Yes, women got the right to vote in 1918. Yes, the World War ended in 1919. But that does not mean that line of evidence makes any sense. It was kind of an extreme example, but it just hopefully will show you that anything that's an evidence that doesn't, it is not going to be in your favor. Um, can someone give me another piece of evidence that might be harmful or contradictory? Well, I suppose we have to do this case that they mentioned that due to the publication of the executions, there was a major decline in the US execution cases numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think it was good at Um. See, my problem with that was that I don't think it was substantiated by hard data or statistics. Because they claim that televisation reduced the number of executions in the long run. They didn't provide to us any data or statistics for that matter. And even if they did, then you would have to go again and go in and question whether that evidence supports the assertion or not. Right? Okay, um, the other debate that we were having in our group was um, all Chinese media should be armed. And I'll just write that down. All Chinese police should be armed. Okay? And um, imagine the opposition coming out, coming out and saying, no, wait, imagine the government coming I had the opposition come up and say, well, in, in 2010 in Beijing, you had more arms for policemen, but you also had more crimes happening in Beijing. Therefore, the Chinese police having arms does not reduce crimes. Does that, I mean, that makes some sense, does it? Even more important to have 
an assertion, and a long list of reasoning that will help the evidence be strong. Because the same evidence can be used for two very contradictory lines of reasoning. And if that doesn't happen, the so person with the better reasoning would most likely win that argument. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, this last thing is labor. And what does that mean? I know all people speak. You don't have to your argument. Sorry? How does your argument to uh, push your case to what it go with that you want? Mm -hmm. Very good. So you have a motion and you have this whole nice answer to argument. And now you'll notice that this motion and this argument are not from the same debate. Because there is no link in how creating a discourse is going to help the Chinese police be more armed. You can have a really fancy argument and you can analyze it all you want, but if the argument is not relevant to the motion, it makes no sense. Does that make sense? Um, the other question I always like asking. Yeah? Because you give me this nice two, three minutes of analysis on how we create discourse and how exactly we create discourse, the entire methodology of creating discourse. And then I come as opposition and go like, well that's great for creating discourse, so what? I mean it's not very good like refutation, but that's still your job to explain. So what if there is more discourse? Or for instance, your, your argument is called increases democracy. And it sounds very beautiful and how you increase democracy and you help the world. You still have to ask, so what? So what if there is more democracy? So what if there is more freedom? So you have to ask this basic question, no matter what your argument is. No, I mean, you finish your reasoning, and then you ask yourself, so what, if this happens? And asking a so what question also helps you establish that thing, because when you answer why maybe this course is important in this debate, you kind of establish the link between the argument and the motion. You start asking the question as you start making the reasoning, but it's very important for you to establish that thing. Does that make sense? Um, let's, let's do another. So this is how an argument should ideally be analyzed. Um, you brainstorm and you think about stuff, you come up with two or three main arguments. You write them down or whatever, and then you analyze them. Is that, is, is that how you usually make arguments or how do you make arguments? How do you normally make arguments? I'm going to start making people at random, <coughs> making them speak. That is 
great. Um, assertion can be called a statement, it can also be called a claim. Reasoning can be also called an explanation. Your evidence can be called an example or an illustration. At the end of the day, we're all going back to the same idea of having a claim and then analyzing it. But it doesn't sound sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, great. Is there any other way that you want to talk about? If not, let's do another work example. And then I think if you have more, if you don't have any more questions or opinions or funny names, we can move on. Um, from the same debate, what was the opposition? Oh, my 
provide some explanation. And then you, you know, I don't know, give me an evidence of how you think he works as an entertainment source. And then just you know, go back to why TV being an entertainment creates desensitization. Does that work? You know, talk about how it's frequently on TV, how you get to see it, how it is there. You're talking about it. It's just, it's, it's just not on TV. It's, it's you're talking with your classmates. It's where the where question comes in. You talk with your classmates about it. It's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. Red Red and Rainbow and you know it's just everywhere. It's on the morning newspaper. You know, like, and 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 yeah, one million people watched the execution last night. It's, it's just everywhere. And when something's everywhere, you get desensitized to it. That is not a good enough reason. Because this entire thing, you're saying, when all this happens, you get desensitized. When something is frequently on TV, on classroom, if you're asking this happens, you get desensitized. There's still a big jump in logic. Thank you, Peter.
and then you give the name of why this centralization is bad for executions, for the criminal system as a whole. That's one argument. Done-ish. Yeah? Um, the second argument closely related was about commercialization, and it comes from the frequency of TV and TV being a source of entertainment, as, as she was pointing out. Um, what did you want to exactly tell me about commercialization? That channels need to make profit, and they were talking about commercials. <coughs> okay. Money, commercials, you give me a nice long litany of reasoning about how more money, well, the channels need to make more money, they're going to sell the TV rights, they're going to have sponsors, like non food spring presents execution because you can drink water and they can't. Something like that. And how it trivializes the entire process. And you know, it makes it that, that you don't take it seriously anymore. And then you've done the entire work of explaining this. But then give me the link between commercialization and emotion. Sorry? So it has to come under this. Dehumanization is essentially desensitization of humanity. <coughs> because if you if you try to think about it hard enough, commercialization itself isn't a bad thing. Like a hundred years ago, people couldn't imagine selling water. Like if you get it from the spring next door. How, how dare you sell water? How are you commercializing life? And then a hundred years later, we're doing this. That's just fine. So commercialization in and, of, in and of itself doesn't really mean it's a bad thing. In this debate, it's a bad thing because it desensitizes you. So you can see one primary assertion, and then you have a secondary assertion that's probably equally important. I mean, this assertion is just, you know, within that reasoning. You explain that it's done. But this assertion is like a sub argument. You have a small little discussion on commercialization. And you say how this commercialization also leads to desensitization. So desensitization becomes like a mega argument. Like, whatever you're going to talk about, this entire speech. Is somehow going to come back to desensitization. Under that, you have an assertion about how it being everywhere creates desensitization, and then how the TV channels trying to make money out of it makes it desensitized. So you have two separate ways of coming back to the same assertion, which is desensitization. So you have one line of reasoning, another line of reasoning, everything happens. <coughs> All that desensitization and the impact of emotion. You can do that as well if you have a mega argument. If you have one assertion and you explain it through different lines of reasoning, it means that argument probably will stand even if one of the lines of reasoning is sufficiently attacked because you have all these other lines of reasoning that will probably remain untouched or will probably still stand publicly. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I heard many times that the papers do go with it. This is my first level, this is my second level. So how does that happen? Is it the same as the stock price? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So you give them one. Does that make sense? 
Okay. 
not only using jobs as bad, also analog, but also compare the two scenarios and tell me why using jobs is going to be worse than whatever the other side is talking about. That comparison would, would make that analysis better because if your entire argumentation coming from opposition in this debate is killing the people is a bad. Makes no sense. Yeah, makes sense. Ten.